then I lived here in Denver area for the last, oh, now it's like, whatever, since 2004, so however many years that is, like 20 something years, right? Is that right? Yeah. 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 Yes. So, um. Or no, not quite 20 something. It's like 18 years. Yeah, almost. Yeah. yeah. 18 years. Close enough. (laughs) So, um. You've always, as long as I've known you, I mean, we met in Occupy, Occupy Denver, um, many years ago, um, and uh, you've always like helped people on the streets organize to to stand up for themselves and to to um, like fight the camping ban, um, advocate for housing, stopping the sweeps. Yeah, what do you what do you do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I think that uh, a few reasons. One is um, just my overall political, social, world views, whatever you call it. My 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 views on. Um, how I think that the the world is it should be. Um, I you know believe really strongly in um, direction of directly affected people, um, and things like uh, mutual aid, um, uh, consensus processes, and consensus like uh, collaboration. Uh, there's just a, a variety of kind of like. Um, sort of foundational <laughs> values and principles that I think uh, create a better world that I uh, try to, you know, to strive for. Um, and so uh, within that, um, like, so during the Occupy movement was really when I got most introduced to houselessness in Denver. And um, through direct like direct relationship and experience living with other um, with living with houseless folks at, at the encampment downtown in Denver, and so that um, sorry, uh, oh, turn the volume down here. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, so that um, was a critical time to really like uh, connect with what's going on in terms of houselessness in Denver. And then, um, and that kind of built the foundation for, okay, like given all of these values, like we want direction of directly affected people. Well, um, where's that coming from? And the, the houses organizing, you know, where's the base of, you know, large numbers of houses, people that are, um, putting their voices towards, the, the fight for the things that you need when you're without housing. Uh, it, it, you know, it just wasn't there in the way that it needed to be. And so, um, so yeah, so I, I kind of just dove in at that time to, um, to organizing around, uh, around these issues driven by some of these principles. Um, and, uh, and that's just kind of led to like an ongoing, um, sense of responsibility to the situation. Um, because the more that you like build relations and uh, just connect on these uh, the realities of of living without housing um, the more that you can't stop working on it because it's just so out of hand Um, folks are really suffering and really um, struggling and um, really not being heard and really being um, demonized and demeaned and, you know, put on the back burner. Um, so anyway, um, so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things together that, that go into why I kind of focused my energy in this direction over the last 11-ish years. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, relationships are really important. I mean, I've really I've learned that through my life that like relationships are like the foundation to everything um, positive 
and I know um, people on the streets really trust you. Um, I know people on the streets that would lay down in front of a train for you. <laughs> um, why do you think that is? Well, so before I had carbon, um, two years ago, I was on the streets pretty much every day, all the time, for whatever that is, like eight years or almost nine years. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I think that was pretty critical <laughs> uh, because, like, even though I was never and have never been without housing, I've always had access to some form of housing, mostly because of living alternatively in a way that requires less money. Um, but I've always had housing, but it was really important to me, especially because I'm somebody with housing and somebody with, you know, white privilege and house privilege and so on. It was really important to me um, to be as embedded in the community as I, as made sense. Um, and so for me, that meant spending a shit ton of time on the streets, um, you know, staying in encampments for periods of time and um, and just, you know, constantly connecting with folks and staying, staying connected. Um, and yeah, and just trying to like do my part to amplify people's voices um, and not, you know, just like push some personal agenda or whatever. Um, so I think that maybe is a good, and, and like, yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many, there's, there's a lot of people that I've known on the streets over the years that are just like some of the most giving, um, giving people that I've known. I mean, people that really literally give everything to help their community, um, try to survive and, and do what they can and you know I think these are some of the people that like I've you know good connections with and they're like yeah you know we want to you know support you because you know they know that like um, I was playing an important role in in you know furthering the fight to stop you know stop people being fucked with for sleeping and stop police harassment and stuff like that and so yeah so then like these like incredibly giving people that are really like living off of almost nothing are just ready to like step out and do what they can it's pretty awesome yeah I think <clears throat> you don't mind me adding to that I think like your honesty your integrity really comes out in your relation when what I see with your relationship with other people you're just upfront and honest with people and and uh, just real. Well, yeah, I hope so. I think it's important. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it's important too. No. Um, what gives you hope? I mean, this is this this world, this city, this situation with un housing and unhoused people. I mean, it's it's dark. What gives you hope? What keeps you going? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Sometimes I think, and a lot of times actually, I think that I have way more hope and optimism than I really should. It doesn't actually make sense. It's not like like rational based on the past 11 years. Like if I look at like what's actually happened and what, you know, the work that we've done and um, and then what's actually happened around houses stuff over the last like 10, 11 years, there's shouldn't be very much reason for optimism <laughs> because it's really mostly just getting worse. There's some things that get better, but it's a lot of getting worse. Um, and, uh, and just, you know, continued, um, uh, continuing the same, same problems of, you know, defunding public housing and losing housing units and, and the perpetuation of a, a narrative that, you know, that demonizes individuals and all of these things that just like, you know, are very prevalent. Um, and, uh, so yeah, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to be very optimistic and, and like over the years, like I was realizing, so we have a, we have an initiative we're working on right now regarding, uh, no freezing sweeps. So trying to swap, stop sweeps from happening when it's under 32 degrees. Um, and I, I feel some optimism around it. I actually like feel like somewhat optimistic that maybe this could actually move forward. But 
in that I was realizing that's the, the so with this particular initiative um, we actually have like three council people who are stepping up to say that they think they, they want to run this and we're like working on the actual language of the bill um, and I realized that even after 10 years of doing this work in the city of Denver focused a lot on Denver policy we have never gotten to the point where uh, multiple council people will actually work on language to a bill that we want. <coughs> never. It's always been fighting bad bills, you know, fighting, fighting bad policies and, and bills and things that are coming forward. <coughs> Um, you know, pushing back against uh, the budget, you know, pushing for budget amendments, so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, we've been doing things in the, the city hall for, for all these years, but it's just that rare. And and, and, and it's not that we haven't proposed things. We, we put out, you know, like a few years ago, we put out like a hundred or, or what it was. I, I can't even remember. It was like a series of like a large number of um Proposals like action items that we wanted city council to take action on. Anyway, none of them um, move forward, and you know I think that's that's testament to a couple of things. One being just how bad the situation is with, you know, the way that council um, refuses to take any sort of action around what's actually needed, and the fact that the policies that we push for are not what's quick and easy and passable, um, but what we think actually needs needs to pass and what like really matters driven by you know like houseless people and so anyway so so based on all of that like I should be like super pessimistic that you know we're never gonna like get anything passed <laughs> um, but I don't feel pessimistic um, so I guess that's a long this is a very long answer to your question because uh, yeah what like I think why I don't is um because uh well one there's no other choice like you literally have no option but to keep fighting i mean when you're like when you are on the streets it's either fight to survive or die basically that's your option and so you know from that kind of reality like our fight to address this shit and to really change it on a systemic level, we don't have a choice. We can't just like be like, oh, you know, like we're just going to sit back and let it be this way. Uh, so it's just, that's part of it. Another part of it, I think, is because um, the, the, the answers are actually very straightforward and very doable. Um, and that's something that isn't isn't always the case with some things there's like some things that are more complicated but there's there's a lot of talk like homelessness is a complex issue it's so you know it's like um it's so complex whatever people always say that kind of stuff and i completely completely disagree don't don't think that that's a, a good way of talking about it um because when it comes to the actual issue of of homelessness or houselessness it is very simple we are literally just talking about creating the housing that people need um, and we have the resources in our nation to do it um, we have you know we have the ability it's not it's not impossible it's been you know the case before back only a matter of about you know 40 50 years ago that there was actually um, adequate housing that housing was wrought with problems was wrought with racism and all sorts of uh, you know uh, issues of, of uh, like uh, discrimination in the way the housing was run and so on um, but we know that it's something that can be done. And so like, um, yeah, I think that's part of another piece of like why, uh, um, and, and things like decriminalization, it's very straightforward. It's not complicated. Just don't pass laws or enforce laws that criminalize people that move people around for doing things you have to do to survive. Again, it's, it's not that complicated. Um, uh, I mean, some things are complicated. Like, stuff around hygiene is, is somewhat complicated. You know, how to set up proper kinds of 
um, toilet access and water access at different access points and well people are living on the streets and you know there's some complication to that um, um, but uh, but by and large anyway the issue is not complicated um, and so anyway I guess and then I guess I could keep going on but I'll, lastly I'll say on, on the sort of the what gives me like hope or optimism um, well two, two more things one is just working directly with directly affected people so like like right now in hand you know we are on the streets at least three days a week in the community we're like talking to and in relationship with and, and like you know doing the work with uh, folks who are directly affected without housing and our, our whole outreach team is people who are either currently or recently without housing and so you know we have to go through these issues side by side it's it is not the same as as living it whatsoever um but like being that directly connected to um the real shit that's going on is is a big drive for like you know this is this is necessary and um i guess that's more related to the like the fact that you like there's no choice but to like continue to fight um and then um yeah and so then i guess sorry i'm like going on and on on this answer but it's okay um so then related to like the the hope um uh so yeah in addition to the fact that it's it's completely possible and 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 we know what's what's needed um the fact that uh do you need help with that baby um the fact that there's like a lot of change that's really happening right now in our society and in, even in particular in Denver is pretty Hello, exciting. Hello, Hello, um, there's more, so apparently homelessness is the number one issue around the, uh, around the, the 2023 candidacy um, in Denver right now. Like the number one issue that people are wanting to talk about. Um, and that's, that's huge. Um, and connected to that is the fact that like more than ever before, um, people are, are putting out their, you know, their proposals, their solutions. There's, uh, you know, real talk that like no, no candidate could even pretend like they can't talk about like a housing for all kind of a, uh, an option. Um, so I'm really excited about the potentials here in Denver, um, that, you know, we could, we could put the, we could change the game. You know, we have the, the opportunity here to, and, 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 you know, related to that, just this massive shift in a, a global movement for social housing, um, which is, you know, again, really nothing different than public housing, but on a, a sort of more, uh, local level and uh, potentially w w with a lot more potentials for um, for addressing some of the, the issues with how previous public housing was run. Um, so anyway, I'll shut up there. But yeah. Yeah. Um, going back to one of the things you said, I mean, it just makes sense not to re-traumatize people and uh, punish people for being traumatized. I mean, it just makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and so you you helped form Denver Homeless Out Loud many years ago, and now you're working with Hand, right? Yes. Can you talk about Hand a little bit? Yeah. Um, so Hand stands for House Keys Action Network Denver, and uh, yeah, it's been a great opportunity. Um, so basically, uh, just a continuation of our work as Denver Homeless Out Loud, but uh, with a new name and some new new structures and new energy um and uh with a lot more focus on housing um so uh in previous years due to the nature of things uh just got very uh had to spend all of our time dealing with on-ground crisis of criminalization uh folks getting moved and having their property taken and you know police harassment and all of that um and so the Things have really developed in the last few years. There's a new group called Mutual Aid Monday that um, now is going to all of the sweeps and doing a lot of that kind of work. And it's really, really been great um, because they're on ground all the time in a way that um, I personally can't because of my, you know, I have my, my 
baby. Um, and uh, so that's been really awesome to be able to collaborate with them. And we as HAND, House Keys Action Network Denver, um, are freed up to put a little bit more focus on housing um, and on you know more policy kinds of stuff. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we um, have been around now for about 10 months. We started in March uh, of uh, last year. Um, and um, uh, we, our first work was to survey houses people about housing. Uh, so we asked, we, we, we surveyed 828 houses people about housing. What kind of housing people want? Uh, what are people's uh, experiences trying to access housing, uh, issues with housing, uh, barriers to housing, and so on. And the, the results of this are a massive, um, a massive report that we're about to release probably the beginning of February, something like that, um, that just shows uh, basically what house people have to say about housing um, and it's going to be the foundation for our further work because it sets the, the groundwork to say okay you know these are the real priorities this is what people are having a lot of issues people are having with issue with number one the fact that housing isn't affordable and that it's not existent at the level of affordability that people need people are housing issues with the fact that the system is set up where you're completely dependent on a case manager to get any sort of housing there's no you know no real path to housing without um, going through you know a service agency and a case manager um, which are, uh, you know, oh, far over, uh, overbooked and, um, and unable to, uh, take the caseloads that they have, um, and, uh, you know, many other sorts of issues with why those don't work for people. Um, and, you know, a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, so, and we, we coupled this with a bunch of research on public housing. Um, so that research is going to, um, show you know the loss of public housing units um and uh the issues with vouchers which is very very disturbing um showing uh you know sort of sneak peeks that um for example in denver in 2021 there was a thousand names pulled for the for the um section 8 housing voucher um through denver housing authority uh and of those thousand names, five months later, only 77 people had actually found housing and got housing with that wow. voucher. Um, so we see a, you know, a horrific rate of return in terms of uh, how vouchers are actually connected to housing. And then when you even look at that further, you see that there's only a tiny fraction of those people um, were people that were actually houseless. Most of the people that get the housing vouchers are not houseless, which is great. We need housing um, for our, you know, for poor folks, regardless of whether you're without housing or, or with housing, um, but uh, it, it's just simply not a, uh, you know, a solution. And at the same time, at the federal, state, and local level, we see this massive trend and, you know, push that vouchers are the answer. You know, this is like vouchers for all is the, the big solution they want to push. Um, so anyway, so our report goes into a lot of that, um, and... Uh, it, it'll be exciting um and yeah so so as hand you know that was kind of like our our kickoff thing was to do that survey and then we've been spending all these months analyzing the data and doing a lot of uh, work on on that um and meanwhile simultaneously um just been organizing around uh the issues facing our community so like organizing around the closure of the quality and hotel where um uh roughly 130 people were being kicked to the streets um and uh, we were able to like uh, change that number a bit um, through through fighting back to say that that these elderly and disabled folks cannot be just kicked to the streets from this protective action hotel, um, and uh, just uh, yeah, so stuff like that, as well as like a bunch of policy uh, work addressing uh, different policies coming forward around housing, working on budget proposals um, to propose that we actually use city money for housing instead of police, um, all of which, of course, were shot down uh, because uh, council doesn't care to take action. Um, so, yeah, a bunch of stuff. Hey, um, hey Steve. Doing? Good, good to see you. Yeah. Yeah, a bunch of stuff like that. Well, um, so uh, you've always, like, 
as long as I've known you have been living in like community housing, community um, living situations. Why is why is that important to you? Um, a lot of reasons. It's important on a a social level to me because uh, I believe that uh, uh, community is critical to how we function as human beings and that like as we like um, do things together in community uh, we're, we're stronger we learn from each other um, and you know generally it's a good thing for us um, if, if it works for people uh, I, on a uh, political level, um, I think that uh, you know, collective living is is a really important way of learning, um, learning consensus process, learning how to actually like um, coexist uh, and and work through issues and make decisions and, and share space um, with people, which is what we have to do in this world. You know, whether it's in a house or the larger world, you know, we have to coexist. So, like doing that on a micro level in a in a in a collective house. I think it's a really good political foundation for our larger world. Um, and also um, on the economic level, um, it's very, very important because otherwise I wouldn't have the ability to do the work that I do. Um, my work over the past 10 plus years um, organizing around this house of stuff that we've been talking about is completely made possible by the fact that I don't have to work as many hours for a paid job because I live in a place that has cheaper rent. And so um, that frees up time to do the organizing um, around household stuff um, and to do it in a way that um, is less dependent on sort of the funding grants and all of the uh, you know systems that, um, we, you know, that are necessary in many ways and I'm not saying they aren't necessary we still we you know we as hand do have paid staff and are you know like um depending on on those sorts of sources but being less reliant on that can can really free you up to um be real and uh be driven by you know the household's community and not as driven by like funding and stuff um so yeah so it's it's an economic thing is big like it's way way cheaper to share space than to uh you know rent an apartment for a sixteen hundred dollars a month yeah 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 wow so finally um you know i i've got um two sons myself and, and so and i really believe that they've taught me more than i could ever teach them um, so what has your baby carbon taught you in the last two years yeah um well, it's been great. I'm, yeah, I'm super happy to be a mom and have that real privilege of being able to spend so much time with uh, Carbon. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, she's taught me a lot about like the well, just human development, <laughs> like watching him learn to breathe and eat and and sit and walk and talk and all of this over the last two years is like incredible to watch how a human just like sucks everything in and learns so quickly and right now he's two so he's just in this like language development phase where he's like parroting everything we say and it's like it's like really like capturing the world through more language um, which is really interesting to watch um, and, and to be able to like watch how he like learns to identify emotions and we can like identify different emotions by giving different names to emotions and that's all really cool um and and yeah and then just like i think like personally um being in a, a, a not just a production mode but in a nurturing mode like i personally tend to be a little bit more of a like kind of production workaholic kind of a person like it's my orientation towards life um, so it's, you know, I want to like get things done as quick, you know, like quick and efficient and just, you know, be productive. Um, but that's not the same sort of thing with a child. Like it's not about being productive. It's about caring for him and, um, you know, being present with his, his needs and so on. 
Um, and so having that shift in orientation, um, I think is really healthy and been really nice uh, to learn that and, and be able to have that balance. And like overall, it's just like such uh, an incredible thing and a real privilege to be able to like have a balance in life like I do now where I'm like caring for him, you know, most of the time, but also doing this organizing work and um, can, but like, don't have to be burnt out like I, you know, used to be. Because like after, you know, nine years being on the streets every day, you really get burnt out. And uh, it, it, uh, I think it would have been tough for me to keep, keep on going at that level for much longer because of uh, just, it's just a lot. Um, and so having this opportunity to, um, to sort of be forced to not be constantly like dealing with crisis on the street is a, uh, really nice yeah. and and I hope that for for folks you know folks should not have to be dealing with crisis on the streets all the time it's it's too much and that's what people that are on the streets in the shelters and you know that house this world are having to do and after a lot of years it really uh, so, yeah. yeah well Teresa I just really appreciate you and and when I grow up I want to be just like you um, if I grow up, I don't know if that's going to happen. And I just wanted to say how much I appreciate you and I love you. And, and thank you for spending some time with me. Thank you. And same goes to you. Thanks, Therese. You know, I, I have uh, looked up to you for many years. Yeah, actually, during, I should have said, like, during 